Welcome to another great episode of American Rifleman Television. The Remington Model 700, introduced in 1962, has become one of America's preeminent sporting rifles, and it's also been used by the military as a sniper rifle. That's our gun this week. For a rifleman review, we'll look at the Winchester 1895 and 405 Winchester. 125 years after its introduction, this rifle is still being made. During World War II, the U.S. Army tried to turn the M1 Garand rifle into a sniping rifle. Their first attempt was called the M1C. But for right now, let's focus on the Remington Model 700. So Remington did not get into the bolt-action rifle business just in 1962. They'd been in this business probably longer than any other American manufacturer. But during World War I, there were two factories making first the British Pattern 14 rifle, the U.S. Enfield, and those were at Eddystone and, of course, at Ilion, one in Delaware, one in New York. And literally, they made millions of 1917s. They got to be very, very good at it. And more American Doughboys were issued the 1917 Enfield than the vaunted 03 Springfield. So the war ends, thankfully, and the contracts are canceled. Well, you have all this tooling. You have a workforce. What do you do? Well, Remington decided this bolt-action rifle, it's going to be a thing. And so they came out with a gun called the Model 30. John Moses Browning, America's greatest gun designer, was toward the end of his relationship with Winchester when he developed the 1895 lever action. The 1895 improved upon earlier designs with a stronger lock-up of the gun, a locking lug that was behind the bolt instead of at the sides of the bolt. This 1895 is chambered in 405 Winchester. It's the current production model produced by Winchester in partnership with Moroku in Japan. The M1C is the design of a firearm company in New York called Griffin and & Howe. And Griffin and & Howe have figured out this way to mount a scope base to the side of the M1's receiver using a combination of pins and screws. The mount was pretty complicated, first of all. And so what would happen is they would send the receivers to Griffin and Howe. Griffin and Howe would m put their mount on there. Uh, then it would be heat treated, and then problems would happen. And the reason is, is the metallurgical composition of the mount and the receiver were not the same. So you ended up with warped receivers. The guns weren't working real well. Eventually, they, they, they worked that out, but it cost time. and less than 8,000 M1Cs were produced by the end of World War II. 